okay? And I think you were embarrassed, and I think it pissed you off because she said something. Maybe she didn't mean to. Maybe she didn't mean to offend you, but whatever she said offended you. You're a man, okay? You're Hispanic. You're Cuban. You have pride, okay? Don't don't sit here and question my manhood. Is what you're saying here? Am I, am I right? That's what you think. I'm asking, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay, but, so what happened then? So what happened with the happened, argument? Man. That's not what happened. No? To be honest, man, I really don't know what happened. Listen, I was so... Fidel, so come on. Don't, listen, you remember here, you remember here, and you remember here. Okay, remember but you conveniently don't remember the most important part. You conveniently don't, conveniently don't remember what happened in the closet, what happened in the bathroom, Okay. But what happened in between the two? The she had her guts was... ripped out in the closet. Meet Fidel Lopez, a 24-year-old Cuban mechanic. On September 20th, 2015, at 3.30 a.m., Fidel dialed 911 from his apartment in Sunrise, Florida, reporting that his girlfriend, Maria Nemeth, was unwell and unresponsive. 911, what is your emergency? Hello? 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 interrogation, observe how detectives efficiently uncover deception and reveal the true nature of Fidel's actions. All right, um, we're going to talk about what happened tonight, all right? Uh, we're going to go everything in detail, obviously. Uh, what I want to do is go over your rights waiver form. Um, this is your rights. I'm going to read you each thing. Uh, you're going to answer. I'm going to have you sign. And then uh, we'll take a seat. Yeah, I don't know how to read in English. So it's really I'll read it. You understand English, though. Yeah, right? I do. Okay. And um, what? what I'm sorry, it's Venture. Right? So let's start with who do you live with over at uh, Colonies? Is it the Colonies or it's uh, the Colonies? Russia. Colonies. Yeah. Who do you live with there? Uh, I live with her, with Maria Nemeth. Okay, Maria. What's Maria's last name? Maria Nemeth. Ma do you, can you spell that? Uh, Nemeth is uh, um, N E M E T H. Okay. Nemeth. All right. How long have you guys been together? We've been together for about a year and year and two months, almost. You know. Okay. And how long have you been in the apartment over here in Sunrise? Over here, about a, six days, like a week. A week. Yeah. Okay. Um, where did you live prior to that? Uh, uh, before, uh, before where did you live before you lived in your apartment? Hialeah. Hialeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you live together in Hialeah? Yeah, we lived together in Hialeah. We, we also were, were living on um, Hollywood Beach. Then we moved to Hialeah for a month. Then we came here. Okay, so Hollywood Beach. Hollywood Beach. Hialeah. Hialeah. Sunrise. And Sunrise. And each time you lived together, you and yeah, Maria? Yeah, me and her. Okay. Um... Who did you live with in Hialeah? Uh, I mean, with, with her, Maria, but who did? Who else did you live? In my house, uh, in the big house, it was me, my brother, my mother, and her. Okay. Before, so all your family. Yeah, all family. And where, where's her family at? Uh, uh, her family, the, she had family in Hialeah also. Okay. Uh, her dad is uh, living in Pompano. Pompano. Uh huh. And her mother and sister is yeah, in Peru. Okay. Oh, how, um, is she in contact with her mom and her, her dad? Yeah, she, she was, you know, like, by Facebook, and, you know, things like that. She, she don't have a phone, we were about to buy a phone. But I mean, do they, they see each other often, or they have a good relationship? As the interrogation began, Fidel told the interrogators that he couldn't read English. However, he understood it. The issue of the language barrier was already an obstacle that needed to be overcome. 
The seating positions in the interrogation room can be strategic in influencing the dynamics of the conversation. Fidel's isolated placement might have been intended to make him feel less in control of the situation. His defensive posture and low-pitched voice tone reflected the success of this arrangement. Meanwhile, the detective's seating positions could have been designed to maintain a balance between engagement and observation, fostering an environment where they could effectively extract information from Fidel while gauging his reactions at the same time. It is quite fascinating that in this entire interrogation, the detectives decided to follow eight out of nine steps from Reed's technique of interrogation. Their approach was aimed at not just persuasion, but practically dragging the truth out of Fidel and convincing him to finally own up to his actions. So let's start. Today, you're, you worked... Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday. Did you, did you work Saturday? Yeah, I was Saturday. Okay, what time did you get off? I get off around around four twenty. Around four twenty. Exactly. I have the all yeah, my that, papers and my receipt. And so what about her? her? What time is she? And she went. She went to work. Also, she went to work yesterday. She she don't work weekends, but she went uh, to the office. Yeah. Uh, for a couple hours, two hours. Okay. From today to. All right, so um, you get off work and you come home to the apartment or you go somewhere else? No, I went straight to the apartment, uh, take a shower, and then um, uh, she, she was cooking dinner, it was ready made. And what what did you guys eat? At, at the house. Yeah, what did you eat? What did you uh, we, uh, she made chicken, mm -hmm. chicken, um, and then beans and rice. Okay. So we just eat and we went to Miami. Um, but, to see my mother. Around what time was that? Mm. It was around seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Six thirty to seven seven forty or something like that. Okay. Then when we get out for, from Hialeah, we just we just went straight to the to the to Chili's, right next to the apartment. Okay, so you went to Chili's before going back home. Hey, exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. And you got the Chili's around what time? Oh, we get to Chile's around like eight o'clock, eight o'clock, eight fifteen, something like that. I'm, I'm not pretty sure, but it's, it was just something like that. Okay. And then, how long did you stay there for? We stayed there for like an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes, an hour and twenty minutes. Okay. We only drink. Uh, she drink one, uh, one margarita. I drink two margaritas. Actually, we drink uh, one and a half each of us. So. Okay. Because yeah, the other one we we split. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, we sure. Was anybody else with you? No, no. just me and her. Okay. And um, the bartender. We went just straight to the bar. We we were on the table, nothing like that. What and who? Uh, you have a car? A, a, a car? Do you have? Do you drive? I drive, but uh, I'm using her car. Using her car. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of car does she have? She have a Scion TC 2009. A what? Scion TC. Scion, Toyota Scion. Oh, Scion. Oh, Scion. Okay. Scion. All right. Um, so you use her car when you have to go to work or when yeah, you have to go Yeah, uh, you know, she would just walk to the office and she don't need to use the car. So then I'm using the car to go to my job. And, yeah, you know. absolutely. Okay, so you guys go get the chilies, have uh, margarita. Then where do you guys go? Um, and we went to the liquor store, to ABC, right in front of uh, the Sargas Mall. The side and uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And then we buy a bottle of um, um, 18, 1800 or something like that. Okay. I, I, I never drink that before, so that's tequila. Yeah, that's tequila. Okay. It's tequila. So All right. we buy that. We went to the house. Around what time did you get back to the house? Oh. I mean, you, uh, you well, so it, it wasn't like not far away from. It wasn't not even 10 o'clock, I believe so. So before 10? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Before 10. Before 10. Anybody at the house when you get back? No, sir. All right. Uh, no one lives with you, just you two live there together? Yeah, just You didn't have anybody over, no one visiting? No, nobody, nobody. Okay. nobody. Um, the first step of Reed's technique of interrogation, positive confrontation, is evident in this part of the interrogation. Fidel was initially given an opportunity to share his perspective and explain his side of the story. The interrogators employed open-ended questions, which prompted Fidel to respond with concise and pertinent answers, even providing an alibi. Additionally, you'll notice that Fidel frequently places his hands on his head during specific parts of the conversation when the interrogators inquire about particular details. This physical cue occurs repeatedly in the video. This indicates moments of stress, uncertainty, or inner conflict. All right, so tell me about the night from when you get back to the house. Tell me what happened. 
I mean, okay, um, we get to the house. She was already, like, kind of tipsy from the margaritas and shit is. Um, you know, we start to drink. Um, we put, like, two car cardboard, uh, you know, boxes in the floor. We put the lime on top. And, you know, because we don't have furniture, so we're about to buy. Now when I get paid, we're about to buy furniture, TV, the, the TV, and things like that, you know? Okay. And so we put the two boxes on the floor in the li on the dinner room, and then we start drinking and talking and listening to music. And you know we have a lot of shock of the of the gila. Then I don't know, you know, uh, in my in my position, me I can handle it. You know I can handle drinks. Because some you know sometimes you know you go a little crazy. And she was she was a lot crazy, and so she was asking me for stuff that she never asked me for uh, for that before. So, like what? You know, like you know the thing with the arm and shit like that. And you know I never done that shit to, uh, with nobody, especially with her. So. Uh, so what? Explain what what kind of stuff was she asking? What do you mean with the arm? I mean, she, first she she start talking like. Uh, something like you know, like uh, I was uncomfortable with it, you know, like uh, one day I want you, I want you to put a bottle on, on my foot, you know. Sorry, I'm just talking right now with you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want you to you know, be open and respect free. her, and absolutely, and, and you know, you're not, dis you're not disrespecting her. You're just telling us what she told you, yeah. what she had, what I she know, wanted you to do. You know, and it's no disres not disrespectful. Uh, you know, I'm a man. I'm I'm her man. So whatever she asks me, I'll do it. Okay. You know, whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Even if she want me to put my hand in her, put it. Okay, I put it. Here we see a subtle approach to positive confrontation. When Fidel visibly hesitated and felt uncomfortable discussing a private conversation with his girlfriend during a drunken moment, the interrogators didn't press aggressively. Instead, they recognized his discomfort and took a more empathetic stance. This involved addressing the awkwardness and providing emotional support, which encouraged Fidel to further explain what had happened. So she was telling me that, and then I don't, I'm, I don't remember really uh, if I did it with the bottle too, or if I not, because I really, I was really, really, really. What, what kind of, what kind of bottle are you talking about? It's a beer bottle. A beer bottle. Okay. All right. So she, what, what did, so what ended up happening? I know she was asking you to do these things. Yeah, she was happened? asking me all those stuff, and I, you know, I was starting feeling like uncomfortable, like you know, because. She never asked for that, and I know she was tipsy. And, but um, when we were doing stuff and all the things, uh, she told me she wanted to throw up to get out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I get out of the bathroom, and I, you know, I was outside. So I believe I was smoking a cigarette. I don't remember if the door was already break or something. I really don't know. I know I break it because she 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 is not strong enough to break it. What door are we talking about? The, the, the glass door. I, 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 I just remember I see glass on the floor, man. I really don't remember when I break it or why I break it. You know, to be honest with you, I really don't, don't remember. Okay. The only thing I remember clearly is that I went to the bathroom and she was like, you know, breathing. She was like, like this. And then I just want to call 911. And where, where was she? She was bathroom. like the, between the toilet and the and the the shower thing. I just honey like, and I thought she was throwing in the, in the shower. I mean, but you know she wasn't. I mean, you thought she was throwing up. I thought she was throwing up, but you know I don't hear any noise, so I'm not the door. She announced it, and I'm getting straight to that she wasn't breathing. And, you know she was she was constant. She was talking to me. Yeah. You know, but. You know, one moment I get so so nervous and scared, and then I get the phone and call 911 because she was getting worse and worse. The first step of positive confrontation appeared effective in engaging Fidel in the interrogation, as by this time he became more expressive and participative. However, some aspects of his behavior raised questions, particularly given the recent loss of his girlfriend. Notably, his lack of emotion while describing the events leading to Maria's death stood out as did his selective memory when discussing crucial details like the precise moment the glass door was broken. The detectives then inquired about Maria's position in the bathroom. 
This particular question foreshadowed its significance in the later stages of the interrogation, hinting at the detective's strategic approach in unraveling the truth. Now, when you called 911, was she, was she still breathing? No, man, she wasn't. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't. I was trying to give her CPR, man. I, I remember I was kissing her and put some air in her stomach. was like up and down, man. And then she wasn't breathing. I, mean, I don't know when somebody is there or not because I well, never seen their body before. Okay. You I mean, said um, when you first went into the bathroom and you saw her, she was breathing. She was breathing. She was conscious. All right. She was like, <gasps> and that's what I called 911. And okay. where was she in the bathroom again? She was like uh, in the toilet, uh, between the toilet and the and the and the shower. The the, the, the okay. The, is is it a is it a shower or a bathtub? Uh, yeah, the a uh, bath. So it's not uh, just like a, a, like, a, like a jacuzzi. Like, okay, you know. so it's not a, just a stand up shower. No, if you want to no. take a bath, you can take a bath in it. Exactly, exactly. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how to say that. No, no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Like, like a, was she in the tub? No. I was, I was trying to put her there, but I couldn't lift her up, man. I was strong. And I don't want her to hit her head or hit something or something, you right, know? Right, right, sure. You know? And, and but the last thing I do is just put some cold water on her face. I open the shower. Okay. And put some cold water on her face to see if she reacts. And I start, hey, baby, you okay? Baby, you okay? I start screaming like a motherfucker and nobody here, you know? I don't know. Neighbors might be here, might be here me scream. Okay. I was screaming for, for help. Right. Is that what you were screaming is help? Yeah. In this phase of the interrogation, the interrogators implemented the second step of Reed's technique, theme development. They steered the conversation by assuring Fidel that they trusted his narrative and provided him with supportive phrases like, sure, you're not disrespecting her, and of course. Um, it's not, disre- not disrespectful. This subtle approach not only boosted the suspect's confidence, but also granted him the space to further explain himself. Importantly, it offers valuable insight into potential tactics for taking out more information and uncovering the truth as the interrogation progresses. Okay, so let's let's go in a little more detail about from when you guys start drinking and, and become sexually active to when she ends up in the bathroom. Okay. okay, we need to talk about that time. Okay, um, what kind of sexual acts did you perform tonight? What did you guys do? What I can tell you, I didn't came. Okay. That's, that's one thing I can tell you for sure. For sure, I didn't came. Okay. Did you have... <laughs> did you put your inside of her? Yeah. Okay, did yeah. you work? And no, I did. We didn't. We didn't even open the new box. We buy a, a box of today. Um, yesterday, last night, we buy a new box of the bottle. We bought the bottle and then we went to the gas station. Okay. We bought the c- Okay. Now I, get, now I got that. Okay. We bought the c- And then we went, you know, but I don't use any c- at all. I, I don't even touch the, the, the new pack. So okay. maybe still there. You, you can see if you, you guys go to okay. okay. you will see okay. it. And then, you know, she was, you know, I, I was strong. She was strong. She was. Tell me for me to do stuff that I've never done before with nobody, especially with her. Okay. And, you know, I know it might be a little embarrassing. Or you might no, want no to. Worry, you, but listen, I want, you, need to do. I want you to tell me what kind of things. Because you're saying she's asking you to do things. I want you to explain. She want me to pull my, you know, my arm on her. Poop. And, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, like a open minded European says, I don't know. Okay, and what, what type of things did you do? I know she's asking you, what did you actually do? Everything she told me to do, I do it. Okay. Which is what? What did she ask you to do? I put my arm in her p- uh, I put my d- in her p- I, I believe I got the bottle. It was, a, it was a, a small bottle. It was a, like a beer bottle or something like that. And she wanted me to put there too. You know, I just tried to make her happy, mm-hmm. whatever. I understand. But she was concerned. She was not. She she wasn't like no cow or something like that. I would never do that to my girl, no okay. cow. You know, okay. that that's not me, man. That's not me. But once we're when we we're doing the thing with the arm, that was the last thing. She she was telling me I need to throw up. I don't feel good or something like that. Where, where then, did this take place? Huh? Where was this when that happened? In the bathroom. You were in the bathroom. It was, we start. 
we start from 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 the from the like I think we were starting in the in the, in the closet. I don't remember pretty well, but we were in the closet too, man. You know. Okay, so let's go step by going. step. You guys start. Uh, you said you had some boxes and you set up like a little area. Listen, you're playing some music. I know where. I know where. It happened. I know. I put my arm in there. I know. I put a bottle. But to be honest with you, details, details, details like that, I cannot tell you, man. I was drunk just like her. Okay. I was drunk just like her. You know, I would love to tell you every details, you know, and I'm, I'm doing my best for it. I understand. I understand. You know? We just want to make sure that we're, we have everything that occurred and happened so that when we look at her, we can understand what, what we got. Okay? That's all. As the interrogation progressed, it became increasingly apparent to the interrogators that Fidel was withholding crucial truths and details regarding the incident that resulted in Maria's death. At this juncture, they began to apply the third step of the interrogation process, handling denials which involved repeated questioning and addressing any denials which came from Fidel's end in the later section of the interrogation. Detectives were quick to interrupt Fidel whenever they encountered denial or evasion in his responses. They consistently emphasized the importance of obtaining every small detail. This strategic approach not only served to unnerve Fidel, but also created a sense of isolation, making him feel increasingly vulnerable. This psychological tactic was employed to weaken his defensive posture, thereby facilitating a more effective breakdown of his resistance. What other kind of things did you put inside her? Well, that's just the bottle, my arm, my You know, that's it. That, that thing, you know, that's it. She was, she was crazy, man. And I was crazy too when we walked, we walked with drunk. I mean, like, you know, I liked it, she liked it. Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. Could get drunk and I get drunk. I mean, like, uh, well, listen, you're talking to two grown men. We understand. Mm -hmm. You know what it is, man. Um, Interrogators reassured him again that he could be truthful and honest about the incident and they wouldn't judge him. This subconsciously made Fidel feel more confident to share a more authentic version of the incident. However, Fidel's repeated emphasis on Maria's behavior while intoxicated, specifically labeling her as crazy with a repeated shoulder gesture, added another layer of deception. It seemed like he wanted to put the responsibilities of his actions on Maria herself. This attempt was evident to the interrogators as the crime scene had already been investigated. Let's see how they break the wall of deception in the next clip. So, any of the damage that, that occurred inside the apartment, you said that it was, you had done it, not her. And you said that what? any of the damage, the broken glass, uh -huh. the broken door. Is this a door broken too? Well, there's uh, a, I, I some holes in the wall. Holes in the holes? Oh, yeah, I did it with my hand. Okay. I did it. My question is this. You said it was last night because before last night there was no problems, no broken glass, no, no holes. No, 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 no. Was it before or after you guys started being... Be uh, for me, it was right... right uh, what you said before we had before we have is when everything happened with the door broke breaks when one thing is break everything else is gonna be break I know I get mad because of something right then we say hey, I'm sorry Rana, and we start make up of or whatever we did you know so, so you, okay. you everything the, the is argument. broke before well, before we have okay. not after not after not after okay so you, you guys are drinking, you have an argument and everything, you you, you get mad and start breaking everything. Yeah, I okay. believe that's what happened, but I don't remember what I get mad Do you remember for. The, you remember making up? Like, yeah, we just, we, we you know, we talk and we, we, we have s I mean, if, we, if it's not, we wouldn't have s okay. Trust me, man. So my, my thing is, is if you remember kind of making up and having s what was the argument about? What what got you so enraged that's that you destroyed the house? That's what I don't remember, man. You know, I know we had the s I know we, I did the, those dirty things, and I know this because I never did this before. And it's a shit, that shit is in my mind right now. Were you talking about before the argument? Oh, what? You said that she was asking you to do certain things. Was that before the argument or after? The yeah, argument? yeah, no, that was, that was way before. Uh, that, we were just drinking, and she was like, I'm in the moon. She was, you know, telling me, not, not telling me to do it today. Which is for telling me, one day I want you to do this, uh, you know. Uh, okay, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't pay attention to that. I know I get mad because of something, it wasn't because of that. It was something else, it was something else. I know I break everything. 
I know I, I did it. If you see you see holes in the in the wall and she's like, I did that. She she did it. I did that. I break the door. If everything is broken inside, I did it. Okay. I understand that. What what I need to know is why you did it. What no, was told no, to you or what problem, what man. what you were upset about. I don't remember why you broke man. it. I really don't remember. I, was wrong. I need to know what she told you I need to I need to know what you guys you were upset about, what the argument was about. I mean you then you ended up making up but <laughs> we I mean, ended up breaking up, but <laughs> what have you? What do you normally argue if, about? If if I tell you, man, I lied to you because I really don't don't remember. I really don't. Actually, I mean, you're, I, you're saying that she brought up you her know what? ex. You know what? You got upset at that. I what? You saying that she's she brought up her ex, her ex boyfriend or ex husband? Hey, yeah, no, no, no. But I don't get upset. But no, she's, no, that. She, no. That was in the beginning when we started drinking. She's mentioning that some of the. Her family, I think it was uh, her aunts or something, don't like him. But, you know, it was, she wasn't talking about him, it's actually, you know, she was talking about her aunts. Okay, all right. But I don't get mad because of that. And I know that I break those, I put those holes in the wall and it's because you told me. Because I, I really don't remember that I, that I did that. Okay. You know? Okay. So. And I know I did it because you say it's holes in, in the wall, I did it. When when she she talked about putting certain things in her, she started talking about that, and you guys were discussing that. Was this before having or during? No, she was telling me she was telling me that when we were drinking, and then we had the argument. Not because of that, maybe it was because of something else. If it would be because of that, I wouldn't do it. Trust me, I wouldn't do it. Something else, and then in the end, we make them up, and I make my mind because I know I did something wrong. I've uh, pushed a wall, I've uh, break the door, whatever, and you know I did whatever she want me to do with her. That's what I, you know. That's the way I, I feel like to do it mm -hmm. because I know I did something wrong. I know I break the door. I know, yeah, you know, and we both drunk, and I, you know, I. I do whatever she want me to do. I put the, put the bottle, it was a small bottle. I believe it was like beer bottle or something that she was drinking to. She was drinking the tequila and the beer. Okay. Fidel confidently crafted his version of events, often claiming to have forgotten important details. However, the interrogator skillfully spotted inconsistencies in his narrative, especially regarding critical moments like when the fight started and their intimate encounter. Despite Fidel's constant attempts, these inconsistencies became evident. This reflects a common interrogation tactic where detectives challenge the suspect's credibility by highlighting these discrepancies, casting doubt on the reliability of Fidel's account. I know I used the bottle. Well, you, I, I know you keep saying you don't remember, but you do remember. Yeah, you do kind, remember. Of, kind of stuff, kind of stuff, little by little, but for and real. It's important that you remember as much as you can and you I tell know. us and you're I honest know. and truthful about what happened. I'm always true. I'm always okay. true. I'm telling you everything. Everything I accept, everything I did, I accept it. And I and I and I and understand that you're you're a man and you're, you're you're accepting it. But we need to know details. We need to know exactly what happened to her, why it happened, what you were upset about. Those things are that you're you're remembering everything, but there are certain things that you're not remembering, and I think it's because it's hurting you inside. No, man, it's, no, it's, not really. It's, it's like you. If I already tell you about the arm, uh, I can tell you everything else. I understand. That's. I understand you put your arm, but there's a reason why you were upset. I, I, that, I that, don't know, man. Listen, I was wrong. I know when I... The, well, you kind of touched on it. You said that, you know, you, you she wanted you to do certain things. And yeah, that yeah. was like, hey, wait, am I not... It makes me feel it, down, but am I not know, upset. Okay. Not upset. Not to, not to break the door and things like that. I have to listen to, you know, something that I don't remember. Something that I don't remember. I cannot tell you, man. If I tell you right now, I'll be lying to you because I really don't know what to say about it. I don't want to be telling you, ah, she told me this, but it's not true. I don't remember. I really don't remember. I take the fall for everything is broke. I know I did it. I know I did. But I don't know why. So you're saying everything in the house you did, everything that occurred in that house was caused by you? Yeah, the every in breaking things. And everything. The injuries that she has inside of her? Uh, injuries that she has. Maybe I didn't, you know, I put the stuff in her. She did it by herself, but she was asking me to do it. You know, you know, Before I mean, I did nothing like I, I didn't force her to do anything. I understand. I'm just trying to make sure that we have anything. The... I never forced her to do anything that she don't want. To. Before last night, you yeah. said this is last night was the first time she asked you to do these things. Mm -hmm. 
with the bottle yeah, in, your, first in, time, in, man. in your fist? First time. Before last night, what is the kinkiest or craziest thing you two have ever done? Before last night? 69. 69. Okay. That's it. Nothing else than that. Not even movies. So you went from pretty, van pretty vanilla, pretty tame. Like, like not doing too much. Not doing too much. Not nothing crazy. Sex. Just normal. No, normal. Right. Normal. Sex. normal sex. You said not even sex. movies to watch. Not even movies. Okay. Right, so yeah. normal. Normal. Sex. To way over here, where now she wants a beer bottle a beer and your fist inside of her. And all that. Shit. I don't know why she was telling me that for two because she was drunk or I don't know why. I think it might be because of something, man, but I don't know what. Well, we need to figure that out. Well, we need to figure it out. I mean, so what would make you mad? I do. What kind of what kind of things would enrage you? You guys have any problems in your relationship? No, man, not at all. We're, no? we're good. What about another guy? No, man. What if you found out that she was with another man? Huh? No, no, man. No, what no. if you found out she was with another guy? If I find out, then I leave her. That wouldn't make you upset? I'll make me upset, but I'll Would it make her. you punch holes in the wall? Uh, maybe. Okay. Right. Maybe maybe punch the guy too. But I, not her. I understand that. Oh, I I'm not I know. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to figure out what made you enraged and what I'm got trying you to upset. Out too, man. I don't even remember when I punched the, the walls, man. I don't even remember that. Like we're no, both, I we know both I are, we both are guys, we both know like if I if I got to a point where I was I was so pissed off. We kind of have an idea of what I would be upset about, especially if it was involving my wife, mm -hmm. but listen, my girl. Man, when you're drunk, you don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. You're intoxicated, and you don't know. You don't know. I was intoxicated, just like her. Yeah. You know, I really don't know what I get mad about. When you're intoxicated, you get mad. You can get mad about anything. Yeah. You know, you you don't control your mind. Was she upset at you for punching the walls? Was she upset at you for breaking oh, yeah. into the house? Maybe. She might. I know we make love. We make love and everything because I said sorry. And, you know, I know I said sorry because if it's not, we, we would never make love. But it's, I know I did. So you're, you're pretty sure that all the damage was caused before you had s Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So that, what, I'm pretty sure. There was an argument. There was damage. There was a makeup. And then there was s And that was it. And then she told me, get out of the bar and you throw up. And it's, it's when all this shit happens, man, she couldn't, she couldn't breathe. She couldn't breathe. I hear her, but I don't hear any noise. When I opened the door, she was like, like this, like, like you, you don't get air into your, to your. So to your... let me ask you this. When she says to you, I don't, I, I got to throw up, get out of the bathroom. Uh -huh. You left the bathroom? I thought, baby, you okay? He says, yeah, 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 okay. I left the bathroom. Did she shut the door? No, no, no. I leave it, I leave it, I leave it, I leave it, I leave it like, like this. Like, not close, but... Almost know, close. It's just, just in case, you know, okay. I'm not going to close okay. the door. So she's in there. What did you, what were you doing? Where, where were you at? What did I you do? went outside and smoked a cigarette. You went outside? Yeah, to the back room. Okay. Interrogators introduced the first identified contradiction in Fidel's account, making the onset of the fourth stage of overcoming objections in the interrogation process. They directly challenged the inconsistency in Fidel's narrative, intensifying their questioning. Fidel's repeated denials and omissions, particularly regarding the motive behind the crime, face heightened scrutiny. The detectives employed a logical cross-questioning approach and repeatedly pressed Fidel for the chronological details of events, compelling him to share more. A pivotal moment emerges in this scene as they uncover a potential instance of violence inflicted by Fidel and Maria during the night in question. Oh man, we both were drunk. I'm, I don't know. I really don't know what's so drunk and she was so drunk. I really don't know, babe. I wish I can explain better. I wish I can explain better. I, I'm telling you everything I remember, babe. I, you know, I'm f telling you everything, everything I, re I remember, like, you know, almost exactly how it is. Almost is the key. Exactly. Oh, it's almost. Because I don't, I don't remember everything. But, but I think you do. I think there's a point that you're trying to block out because it's killing you right now. It's burning you up because of what happened. And you're thinking back right now, thinking, wow, I can't believe I did something like that. But it wasn't you. You weren't in your right state of mind. You you wouldn't intentionally listen, hurt her, right? Listen, there's nothing inside of me that I have not telling you. Everything that I know is everything that you know. Okay? You know, I'm not I'm not hitting nothing. I'm not you know, 
I, you know, I prefer to pay 20 years on job just just for, for you know, you know, for her family to be okay and they don't think I'm a monster. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think you're a monster. No one I, thinks you're you a monster. Know, I don't. I but, don't but, you have to, but you have to be honest and help us put I'll the pieces honest. together from point A to B. You're giving us here and then there's a gap and then you're giving us after. That time in between from that closet to that bathroom, something happened from the closet to the bathroom that you're leaving out. Okay? You guys drank. You had an argument. Yeah, Did the argument happen after, possibly? You're saying it happened before. Did it happen after? Did it happen during? Uh, when I break the stuff, it was right. Why are you right breaking before stuff? Before we make Okay. So you're breaking stuff. You're having an argument. What is the argument about? I don't know. That's, that's, that's what I, I, I don't know. I really, I wish I can remember and I'm telling you. You know, I can't, but see, I can't, that I can't would, tell you. Do you I can't understand tell you how anything. that would, I, can, I know, but don't you understand how that would make more sense? That if you did something during that may have injured her, there's a reason. You know, there'd have to be a reason. You're not just going to do it so for no reason. Is it for no, for drunk, for right? no reason. No, you're not going to hurt her for no reason. You're going to hurt her just because she's drunk. Cause she's no, your, no, 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 just because no, you're no, drunk. No, 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 no. You said you've had so when you're drunk before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of you have been but, drunk before. But no, not like yesterday. Yesterday we were, we were like really, really, really drunk. I understand that. Okay. and But you also said to us earlier that the, the kinkiest or the craziest thing you've done was a 69. 69. Okay, so that's why we're saying something else happened here. This, isn't, this isn't rough I've said okay, that before. I understand that. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. That's you do? Okay, so then explain to us what it was. You know, what, what was it was it? to me a rough when I was drunk. And for her, the same thing. Because she didn't scream with pain. She wasn't telling me to stop. You know, how can I explain? I mean, I don't leave nothing behind. I can tell you whatever. I can tell you, yeah, we have an argument about her edge. And that's it. But I'm not going to tell you that because and I really don't know, man. Is the, the, uh, you said that she never said stop. Was, uh -huh. she, was she unconscious? Did she, she was, pass out? She was talking. She, <laughs> she was talking. Initially, yeah. But you could be, you know, when you get drunk and you, you have no idea what's going on and you, you When she back. was unconscious is when I find, when I went to the bathroom, she cannot breathe. In the it's closet. When, Did she pass out in the closet? No. She was, she was, she was like normal, like, like normal. She, was, okay. she wasn't normal in the closet. She had her stomach ripped out of her in the closet. I know. You, you guys so that's not that normal. Now, but. There's the amount of blood that's in the closet and, and what happened in the closet. There's there's no way that she was either saying no and stop because it hurt like hell, or she was unconscious. That's the only well, explanation we can have she here. She wasn't conscious. She wasn't, and she wasn't telling me to stop. But that that's the thing. It's one of those two things no, because there's, she's gonna let you rip her stomach out and not say anything. That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> that that makes absolutely no sense, Fidel. Does it to you? It does. It does okay, make sense. So I'm not. Uh, we're, so we're on the same page I'm here. The same, yeah, we're on the same page. Okay. Because. Uh, as the interrogator's cross-questioning approach began to yield results, Fidel's defensive posture gradually weakened, causing him to admit the possibility of his actions being monstrous towards Maria's family. Swiftly transitioning to the fifth step, getting the suspect's attention, the interrogators aimed to reassure him while highlighting the discrepancies in his account directly. They also attempted to offer a broader perspective on his withholding of the information. Unfortunately, Fidel remained too conscious with his narrative, struggling to fully grasp the shift in the approach. You know what the problem is. That's that's what you're holding back, and that's what you need to come clean with. That's what you need to be honest with. Like the touch no, machine listen, on me, man. from whatever you're saying, from whatever the problem you had, that's where it went bad. That problem, you know, is what you had. You know what happened. You know what was upsetting you. I have nothing against her. Whatever I think I you do. With her. I think you do. Maybe I, you know, things get out of hands. Okay. And that, but it's but when not things get out of hands, things are like, hurt inside or something. Things I mean, get out of hand because something bothered you. There's something you oh keep saying that we got to the point, I got upset or something bothered you, and then it, things got out of hand. What was it? What was it? Man? That's what I'm trying to figure it out, man. I you, really, you don't have to I, figure I, out it. You know what it was. 
What was it? What caused you to go? Listen, if I really, if I really it, know that, I'll tell you. No, right but now. I think you do. You do. Like, I'm not. You're. you're listen. I you mean, know yourself. You know, know who myself. you are. Okay. Know you know what I'm. upsets you. No. Okay. Well, you, yeah, but you know, no, when you're mind. drunk, you still know what upsets you and what causes you to go get upset. All right. You've had arguments with her in the past, right? You've had arguments with her in the past. You know what things have sparked and and caused you to get upset. This is no different, man. And you need to just tell us why. That's all you need to do. It will be a big weight lifted off your shoulders, I'm telling you. It really will. You know, I think part of the reason is you don't want to tell us. Because we're three men sitting here. I think part of you is embarrassed. And I think I have an idea what may have happened. And I think you do too. I know you do. And you just don't want to tell us. Okay? What do you think? What do I think? I think you wanted to have a nice night with your with your girl. And you guys went out drinking. And you came home. And you stopped and bought some more, some more liquor. Some tequila. You came home. You're drinking. And things started moving. And you drank so much, you couldn't get your... You couldn't get it. You couldn't get an erection. You're asking me what I think. I'm telling you what I think. Okay. And then because you couldn't get your hard, okay, an argument, a fight ensued. Because now you don't feel like a man. Now you don't feel like you're worthy. Now you don't feel like you can. You can. No pun intended. Rise to the occasion and do what you got to do is please your girl. Okay. And so an argument ensued. Okay. And you got angry. I'm okay. not doing nothing against her, man. Okay. You said earlier. You said earlier you told us that you didn't. Uh, so you didn't. I did, that's I, did, I think because you couldn't get your heart. That's no, I, okay. I think hurt. Okay, and I think I you were embarrassed, and I think it pissed you off because she said something. Maybe she didn't mean to. Maybe she didn't mean to offend you, but whatever she said offended you. You're a man, okay? No you're Hispanic. You're Cuban. To... You have pride, okay? Don't, don't sit here and question my manhood. Is what you're saying here. Am I, am I right? That's what you think. I'm asking, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay, but, so what happened then? So what happened with the happened, argument? Man. That's not what happened. No? To be honest, man, I really don't know what happened. Listen, I was so... Fidel, so come on. Don't, listen, you remember here, you remember here, and you remember here. Yeah, remember but you conveniently don't remember the most important part. You conveniently don't, conveniently don't remember what happened in the closet, what happened in the bathroom, Okay. But what happened in between the two? The she had her guts ripped out in the closet. And you're going to sit here and tell us, come on, you don't remember what the argument was about? Fidel, we both said it. I don't think you're a monster. I don't think you intended to do what you did. Okay? But ultimately, you did it. I did it. I know that. And I know you know that. To be a man about it, explain why. What set you off? What got you so angry? You were enraged. Why? Just explain why, and you won't know. You're a human. Okay? You're a human being. You're flesh and blood, just like he and I. And you snapped and things got things went bad. Okay? Just explain that. That's all we're asking you to do is explain why. What happened? What started it? We were like we were like drinking. We we're drinking, we get drunk. I don't even know, not even when I open the holes, when I, when I break the window. I don't, I don't, don't even remember when I did that. I don't, I don't know what was the argument. I know something happened, but I really don't know, man. I mean, like. Fidel, you ripped her insides out of her through her. I didn't mean to do that, man. I understand that, but you did it. What pissed you off to the point where you did that? In the first part of this clip, the interrogators aim to gauge the depth of Fidel's involvement in the crime. 
The interrogator closer to him confronted Fidel about the discrepancies in his story, urging honesty. Meanwhile, the other detective observed Fidel's body language to assess his receptiveness. This phase is pivotal, setting the tone for the entire interrogation. When Fidel quietly listened to the first interrogator, the second detective swiftly moved to the seventh step, proposing alternatives. In the later section of this clip, the second interrogator took the lead and started giving alternatives based on their interrogation so far, and also the evidence they had gathered from the crime scene. This stage served a crucial purpose, to prompt Fidel to contemplate a different, often more extreme version of the incident. By offering these alternatives, the interrogators aimed to create a stark contrast with Fidel's current narrative, compelling him to correct them with the truth. What was going through your mind at that time? Well, I was going through my mind? Well, she was dying. Okay. And what do you think was going to happen? Or what? If she died, what did you think was going to happen? If she died? Mm-hmm. What would... What I'm gonna think, I'm there. I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm, you know, I, I cooperate with anything has to be done. You know, I'm not run away. I'm not, you know. Yeah, I know. I know you didn't. You didn't run. You're here. You're talking to us. You're, you, you. And I know is whatever happened. And and this is our thing. This is why we're doing what we're doing to try to get some explanation or reasoning. Because when somebody outside, when everybody that's gonna look at this situation and look at what you did. If there's no reason for what you did, that's worse than if there is at least you had some reason for what you did. I mean, if they said, you know what? He doesn't know why he did it. He just took her life and put her out of her misery. There's no... But if you at least have some kind of reason, some kind of justification, some kind of explanation, you know, explanation of why you did what you did, let me tell you, man, not only for you, but for everybody else looking at this, at least have some kind of closure, some kind of like, you know... Thing. I, I wish I can, I and, can have and, and, right now to be honest with you, all the things that he's been giving you, saying like, you know, relationship problems or problems or wants to leave you, go to Peru. Okay, I would understand. Maybe that gave you justification. You got started drinking, you weren't thinking straight, you got enraged, you got pissed off, and you took it out on her. I mean, but by you saying... That's an explanation. By, One of those by, is an explanation. By saying, I got, we were drinking, then I got enraged and took it out on her, but I don't know why. That, I mean, that shows that you're cold-hearted, man. You look like an animal. You look like an animal in that sense. And I know that's not the case. See, you got to remember something, too. When we do an investigation like this, we, you know, we're talking to neighbors. We're not going to... You live in an apartment complex, mm -hmm. okay? Your neighbors are right there. The walls are thin, okay? So they hear what sounds like construction going on in the apartment next door. Because you're breaking shit for hours. And they hear a male voice screaming for hours. But they don't hear any female voice. Because I was, I was fine. I was for hours before 911 was called. Before 911 was called? Yes. Around 1 o'clock in the morning. 911 was called sometime around 3.30. Somewhere rough there. saying what? I don't know what you were saying. I have no idea. I remember when I screamed it was when I I know that she wasn't breathing. It's when I started screaming. Okay, but okay. that's where that's where, it's, where where I screamed. But you didn't call nine one one right away. Uh, of course I did call nine one one. I called nine one one when she wasn't breathing. I called nine one one right away. The suspect. In the first clip of this section, Fidel is seen trying to deny his responsibilities, and as a result, the interrogator maintains the same balance of dynamics. While one was rationalizing their question and providing an insight to Fidel of how it was beneficial for him to speak out the truth, the second one kept cornering him by breaking his defense. In this section of the interrogation, Fidel looked quite uncomfortable once he understood that the investigators were already aware of the crime. He became more cautious when the interrogators informed him that they had already taken the accounts of the neighbors. This helped interrogators to push him more efficiently. Where the, the kinkiest or craziest thing you've done is a 69. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden... She wants you to shove a beer bottle inside of her. That's what she was telling me, man. And she wants it, and she wants you to shove your fist in there, your hand in there. That's what she was telling me. Fidel, come on! I don't believe that. Okay, I just don't believe that. Because you know what? I'm older than you. He's older than you. We're both men. Okay, as are you. These things are gradual. Okay, 
you take steps. Oh, we do a little bit of this. You maybe try this, try some of this. I don't like that. So we won't do that anymore. Let's try this. Let's try this. There's no way <clears throat> before last night, had you ever put anything else inside of her besides your, oh. no, your what else? Maybe a couple fingers. Not even a finger. So you expect us to believe that from just your to a beer bottle and then your fist? No way. Fidel, listen, now you're making yourself out to sound because it just doesn't make sense. And anyone that hears that is going to go, no way. You don't go from a to a beer bottle to your whole fist and up to your elbow. That just doesn't happen without some type of reason. Exactly. And that happened because you got so angry. Okay. And that's what we want you to explain to us. Paint the picture for us of what happened. So you look like a human being that just snapped. Okay. Instead of some sadistic monster who said, you know what? This bitch, I'm just going to rip her guts out. I don't think you're that person. Either does he. But you have to explain to us so we can explain to other people. Listen, he, had no, he didn't mean to do this. He really didn't. They got into an argument. They got into a fight. And, and, and you know, with the alcohol, one thing happened, you know. But you have to explain that to us. The very time. Um, the, the crime scene, the, the, they, they shake the... If she had something with the, with the tequila caused something to her too. The tequila? Well, yeah. it caused her to be intoxicated. Absolutely. Intoxicated and something to, because she wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. I understand that. She wasn't breathing because she was bleeding. She bled out. Because of what was ripped out from her insides. That's why she wasn't breathing. In the last clip, the second interrogator takes a decisive approach by pointing out all the contradictions in Fidel's statements, going back to the beginning of the interrogation. The interrogator emphasized the need for an explanation that portrayed Fidel as a human who snapped under pressure rather than a sadistic monster. Despite this, Fidel tried to play innocent as a last effort to maintain his narrative. However, a significant turning point occurs when the second interrogator moves closer to him. This marks the beginning of the eighth step of the interrogation process. The physical proximity appears to break through Fidel's remaining defenses, finally setting him on the path toward confession. And it takes a man, a true man, to admit, okay, I f***ed up, man, I made a mistake. I had no intention to kill her, I had no intention to doing it, but this is what happened. It takes a man to do that. It takes more of a man to admit when he's wrong, and it takes a man to cry. Be that man, be that person, because that's who you are. Mm, she was telling me she she going to Peru. She was she needed to go to Peru because she she was missing her mother, and you know, and I'm not gonna be able to use the car to go to work, and you know, then she just start screaming at me and all that. I get paid to start punching the shit. I really don't remember what I punched the shit. You just tell me. I know I get paid because of that. Then, then after that, I don't know how, how we end them up in the cross or whatever. I know we made peace. But when we were doing the uh, making love, she told me something that, that really don't, it just, she, she changed. My name, she called me the, the other f***ing name of the other guy. And then she said it twice. And she was wrong, and she was confusing me with him. I, I didn't want to kill her. I know, I killed her. That's whatever I did with her was the reason. But she was asking me about the bottle. And she was asking me about the hand too. And maybe things go a little bit far because, you know, 
once she she's confusing me with the other one and she told me to do stuff with her that I've never done before, I think that she might think that's the, that's the other stuff that she does with the other one before. Things go out of hands. I know, you know, and I don't mean to kill her. I don't think you did. No, I mean to go. Walk us through what happened. This intriguing clip shows Fidel accepting his crime. His tone of voice changed as his defense crumbled. However, the interrogators tried to ease him into the process of confession so that they can extract more information that Fidel might have withheld. In the next clip, Fidel is shown images of the crime scenes and the horror of it. Watch his reaction and how interrogators handle the situation. Get some sleep. Turn over a little bit. All right, good. Did you eat? Did you eat? No. Still not hungry. All right, so we have some things we need to. Uh, Clear up, okay. Um, we just had crime scene go over to the uh, finishing up the scene, and I got some things I want to show you that maybe you can help clarify, okay? okay. Some pictures from the scene. Where where is this area? There's a, there's in the room. Okay, what room? The, there's a, the room, the, this is the closet. Mm -hmm. The so, bedroom, that's a dresser? Uh -huh. Okay. And where's the bed in relation to the closet? If the closet, if this is the closet in here, where's the bed in this room? Where would the bed be? The bed is right here. Okay. All right. These items on the ground. This is the uh, flat yeah. iron. Yeah. Was that used? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What other items on the ground were used, were put inside of her? Blue bottle. That blue, uh, blue yeah, bottle? Blue bottle. Okay. Then, then, then. I think there's some other foot. Other... I'm going to show you some more. Sure. All right. So this is a better angle. Actually, let's do this. Yeah, it's this way. I'm sorry. This is so it's the closet. This is outside the closet. See this this computer? Uh -huh. That's this. Yeah. Okay, you got you understand that? Yeah. Whose computer is that? I mean, we both uh, we both use it. You do. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about some of these items? There's a lot on the ground. I don't know what's this. No, no, we just these bottle. What about this? This is a looks to be like a tripod for a camera. Yeah, this is for a camera. Did you I, did I, you use I, that? I don't think so. Man. I don't. I don't remember to use that. I know at the bottom of this, for sure. Okay. That one, yep. <clears throat> That's inside the closet. That's inside. Yeah, inside the closet. Do you see the amount of blood that's there? Yeah, man. And You see this? Yeah, this one. You know what that is? Yeah, a piece of pin from inside. Piece of what? what is it? From inside of her? Yeah.
Real same, nice. same closet, different view. All the blood, tissue, pieces of her, pieces of her insides, blood on the wall. There's a handprints. Blood on the handprints, handprints. And then see that right there? What's underneath that? What's covering? What's that covering right there? I don't know what is this. Okay, what not is what this? is that? What's underneath it? Because that was put there. You put that there. I don't know what it was and what's on it. Hold the f That's her insides. Those are her intestines. So I know you can sit here and you can say you don't remember and this and that. Let me tell you, you're not going to forget that. And the fact that you put something over that, you're not being completely honest with us. That came out of her, was in the closet, you saw it, you covered it, and then you you, you, you flipped out. Do you think that I would just cover it and don't you think of no, no, listen, listen, throw it away or listen. I'll cover everything else? Look at this scene right here. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all removed and lifted, and that's what's underneath, and that's where she was. The emotions reveal the horror and emotional impact of the crime. This could be interpreted as guilt, remorse, or distress over the consequences of his actions. On the other hand, Fidel's repeated emphasis on the phrase, I didn't mean to, suggests his intention to downplay or mitigate the gravity of the crime. By claiming lack of intent, he might be trying to minimize his culpability or distance himself from the full responsibility of the act. I'm just... I hope I, I hope I go to the bathroom and she she's gonna move. That's that's for sure. She, she's gonna move. She gonna help to. She couldn't move. You took her to the bathroom. Yeah. You carry her. I don't, I don't remember. If I, you I, drag if her. If I, if I, I don't remember. Was she conscious at this point? Yeah, she was with the eyes open. I mean, like oh. she was like just because her know? eyes are open doesn't mean anything. You see this in here? Uh -huh. That's all the blood I, that's in her body is in that closet. Uh -huh. You don't you don't live through that. No, no, no. What was she saying? Did she say anything? When would that happen? She didn't say anything. I mean like she she don't scream, nothing. Nothing. Why do you think that is? What? Why do you think she didn't scream or say anything? That way she just passed out. She was unconscious, passed out from alcohol, or passed out oh, from unconscious loss of blood. Well, losing so much blood. Do you see the amount of blood that's in here? Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know, I know. She it's... passed out because she lost so much blood. I know, I know, I know. Okay, and she didn't scream, according to what you're saying, mm -hmm. because she wasn't conscious. How did, did you? How did you end up in the closet? How did you guys end up there? This clip captures Fidel's recurrent pattern of contradicting himself throughout the interrogation. This behavior is likely a result of the emotional turmoil and guilt he experiences due to his actions. The contradictions in his statements could be indicative of his internal struggle to confront the truth and the consequences of his deeds. By acknowledging that he did harm Maria, Fidel admits culpability to some extent. However, his subsequent claim of not remembering certain details creates a discrepancy in his narrative. This selective memory or attempt to distance himself from specific aspects of the incident might be a defense mechanism to shield himself from the full weight of responsibility. Well, mine wasn't, wasn't blank because she called you, you know for a fact that she called you by someone else's name, which you told us upset you very much so. You felt disrespected. You yeah. felt that... And that point, that she, the alcohol and that, and my mind get bent. And you told us that you, you pulled, you, you put your arm inside of her. No. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you told us earlier that she said she wanted you to put her arm inside of her. Mm -hmm. That's not true. I know. That's not true. Okay. 
Just like she didn't want you to put the beer bottle inside of her, did she? She was talking about it, but it's not like I, she was asking me for me to do it. That, okay. that never happened. She was that never happened. That never happened. And what about the what about the the flat iron? No flat iron. This thing that you said you put inside of her. Yeah, I put it inside of her. Did she ask you to put that inside of her? No, man. She was unconscious, but I thought do this already. She. At what point did she go unconscious? What point in this this incident? From the beginning, man. From the beginning. And where did it start? I don't know if we start in the bathroom or the closet, but. We do we start here in the closet? For sure. She was unconscious in the closet. At one point, did she say the other guy's name? Then she just said the other guy's name. Like. I don't know her, know her. So she wasn't coherent, she was just mumbling? Yeah, I'm mumbling, like, you know, not like she cannot talk, but she said the name. And then at that point is when you started? Yeah, uh, started, you know, screaming. What did you do first? I don't know, I know, I break all the things and, and throw everything. You broke all her things? No, not her things. I mean, I'm talking about Intruna in the house. Okay. You talking about the sliding glass door? Uh -huh. Are you talking about the the whole the whole <coughs> the wall and all mm -hmm. that? I should do it in that moment. Like, like I said, I don't remember when I did it, and I remember with what I break the door or, or whatever. Yeah. I know I did it. I know I did it. She's in the closet during that time. She's at, in yeah, the closet during so. that time. I don't think so. You go back in. What's the first thing that you put inside of her? The uh, first thing was my Okay. Well, she was passed out? Uh, she was like, like this. I mean, she, passed out. She, the... she didn't know you were having sex with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, she does. She does. She wasn't You're saying she, she passed was, out. The blood, so the blood is not like, like this when we start. It's nothing, you know, okay. nothing like that. She was, she, was, she was not passed out. She was, you know, and then this one, the... Start to get like little, you know, she start to get like a little like unconscious, you know. And I don't know, man. I turned myself into a fucking monster. Because she called her ex husband's name? Huh? Because she called you her by her, your, by her ex husband's name? Yeah, man. My, my mind blocked stuff. I mean, my mind just. Thoughts, everything I was doing, I didn't think it just threw straight up. And when you I didn't mean to kill her, man. I really don't. Listen, when I see that, you saying you didn't mean to kill her? I didn't mean to kill her, man. You pulled her insides out. You pulled her intestines out. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't knowing what, what did I was, you think doing, was gonna. Man. What did you think was going to happen to her? Did you just get up and go make breakfast? I mean, at some point during this, you knew there was a point of no return, right? That's why I took it to the bathroom and started pouring water on her face and calling out with one man. But it was, she was gone by then. No, she was breathing like, like this, but... Directly confronting him with the images and with all the available information, the interrogators were finally able to learn the reasons behind the violence inflicted on Maria by Fidel. With remarkable efficiency, they succeeded in obtaining Fidel's confession, including the motive for his anger, and a detailed chronology of the events that led to the situation spiraling out of control. After successfully obtaining Fidel's confession and all the related details about the crime, the interrogators followed their standard procedure and proceeded to arrest him. He cooperated with the authorities throughout this time and waited for his trial. In July 2017, Fidel Lopez pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and assault in connection with the death of Maria Nemeth on September 2015. He changed his plea in an effort to avoid facing the death penalty. Additionally, his mother, sister, and a cousin also addressed the court during the proceedings. 
Broward County Judge Iona Holmes presided over the sentencing, where Maria's uncle read a letter on behalf of the family, leaving the decision of Fidel's fate to God. As part of the plea agreement, Fidel will not be eligible for parole and cannot appeal the life sentence. During the sentencing hearing, Fidel sought forgiveness from Maria's family and expressed gratitude to the judge for sparing him from the death penalty. As the dust settled and the legal proceedings drew to a close, one can't help but wonder, what drives individuals to commit such heinous acts, and how can society work towards preventing such tragedies in the future? The answers to these questions lie not only in the pursuit of justice, but also in understanding the underlying factors that contribute to such crimes. If there are similar cases you want us to cover, let us know in the comments section. For more such content like this, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, Real Crime Psychology.